Good morning, Freedom. How's it going today? Come on. Hey, this morning, don't you just love the Bible app? It gives you a fresh word every day. And uh, today, it's interesting. The verse of the day is found in John 14, 27. I am leaving you with a gift, peace of mind and heart. And the peace I give is a gift the world cannot give. So don't be troubled or afraid. Isn't that a good word? I love that word. This morning, um, as we enter into worship, I just want you to be thinking about that, that the peace that Jesus gives can only come from him. It's only him, and it's peace in your heart, peace in your mind, peace in your spirit, and it cannot come from anywhere else. And that today is a good reason to worship. That is a good reason to get up on our feet, to give our attention, our mind, our spirit to Jesus and to truly worship him. So let's pray and then let's hop into worship. Lord, thank you so much for this awesome opportunity to come before you today, to put our mind, our attention, our heart, our spirit on you, Lord. And God, today we're saying thank you. Thank you for the peace that only you can give. God, you are the Prince of Peace. And this morning we say thank you. Thank you for what you've done in our life. Thank you for what you're doing in our life. And thank you for what is to come. God, today in this place, we want to see your miracles. We want to encounter your presence. We want to see you, Lord. And so right now, before you, we say, yes, God, come and do what only you can do. We submit to you. God, we want to be obedient to everything you're doing. Open our ears to hear. Open our eyes to see, God, to see all that you have for us. We love you and thank you. In Jesus' name, amen. Let's worship.
longer. It's in the sun and the rain that he's good.
purpose. I thought about it and I still did it. And I messed up. Wow, who are you? Holy Spirit was there too. <laughs> says all the days of my life that's why I can confidently say that when I mess up even when I turn my back on God still he's coming after me and he will set people up in your life Christian or non-Christian he will use whomever whosoever will to bring place to woo you. Aren't you thankful for his faithfulness in your life? Can you just sit your hands to him this morning? And we all have our own story. We all have our own trials that we've been through or that we're walking through right now. But one thing never has, will, never has, it never has changed. It won't change. Never is his goodness, his love, that he is for you and not against you. <laughs> that you, Tommy, he's, I'm his favorite too. <laughs> We're all his favorite. God, we just thank you. Come on, just take a, take a moment right now and just thank God for his faithfulness in your life. When you didn't deserve it. That's what grace is about. You don't deserve it, but he gives it anyways. That's how much he loves us. We're grateful and we're thankful, God. Come on, just say thank you, God. Thank you for being a good shepherd. Thank you for leading me beside still waters. Thank you that in the chaos, I can feel your peace. <laughs> hey, 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 we thank you, God, 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 thank you, 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 so good, so good. Sing it again, let's sing it again all my life. All my life. Come on, sing it out.
of you may say, man, why over and over and over again? Do you know that when we get to heaven, that's the song? <laughs> we won't need screens. <laughs> that's the song. And the, and the word of the Lord says that the angels, that they circle him, singing holy, holy, holy is the Lord. God Almighty, who was and is and is to come. And as they circle him, something is revealed to them, different about him, something new to them. God is so powerful, so vast, so big in nature that it's hard to comprehend all that he is. I mean, he's father, he's teacher, he's uh, comforter, he's peace, he's friend, he's deliverer, he's savior, he's refuge, he's healer. He's He is so much to us. And what I want us to do as we begin this next song I want you just to put your hand on your heart this morning and to, sorry, when I hear people talk and I get distracted. Um, I, I'm so sorry, but I am like totally losing my train of thought. Um, what were we, what was I saying? Oh, no, it was something different. I, wa I want us, to, I want us to open our hearts and our spirit to receive something new from God, the nature of God, the characteristics of God. You may have grown up in um, with an abusive father, for instance, and there are a lot of different things that you may have grown up with, but say that it's hard because of what you've been through, it's hard for you to see God as your father in a healthy way, right? Like that's just kind of the natural progression of things. But God loves, say loves, God loves to reveal himself to his sons and his daughters. That's what he's all about. He created us for his pleasure. He wanted you, Fanny. He wanted you, Deb. He, out of all the people in the world, he said, no, there's still another one. And there's still another one. How are there so many people in the world and, not, and none of us look alike? Even twins have differences. Their spirits are different. Nobody has the same spirit. And we're all created in the image of him. So I want you, I just, that's what I woke up in my spirit. I woke up this morning feeling like, God, I just feel like you want to reveal yourself in a, a new way. Not that he's changing, but for our perception of who he is. That I heard there's going to be an undoing an unraveling of some mindsets and some thought processes. And after there's an unraveling, then he'll begin, begin to give us the right thought patterns of who he is. Can, we, can I pray that over you this morning? Just put your hand on your heart. Lord, Holy Spirit, you're the one who searches our hearts. You, you lead us and you guide us. You give us your wisdom. You comfort us. And we just ask you, Holy Spirit, to shine your light on our spirit, on our heart, on our minds. Those old processes of thinking that keep us from the knowledge of who God really is. The revelation of who God really is to us. God, I pray that you, there would just be an undoing. Come on, give him permission to undo the things that are the, the wrong thinking patterns. We give you permission. I give you permission, God. 
We want to walk in your truth. We want to know your truth, the knowledge of your truth that sets us free. Reveal yourself. your presence is the comfort of my soul, and there's nowhere I'd rather be, when you're singing over me, I just want
guess there's nowhere I'd rather be when you're singing over me. I just wanna be here with you, my Jesus. Oh, I'm lost in your mystery. Just wanna be here with you. There's no way, there's no way I'd rather be when you're singing over me. I just wanna be here with you. Sing it out, I'm lost, I'm lost in. There's no way I'd rather be Pressing it over me Oh, I just wanna be here with you I'm lost, I'm lost in your Jessica, if you could join me. Uh, Jessica came up and had a, a word the Lord gave her during worship. Um, yeah, so I, uh, I wear contacts and I wear glasses and I cannot see it. And I wore my glasses today and God, um, I just felt like I need to take, take them off and I, I need to not be able to see anything because when, when, when things in life is, are moving so abruptly and it's like we cannot see what is coming next or we can't even see like what's gonna happen in this next month or maybe like there's something changing in our finances there's something changing in our family or in di or the dynamics or there's something changing in um in, in our life and it's just like I, I can't see what's next and God just I just felt like God needs to tell us and wants to tell us that when we physically cannot see, he sees what we can't see and he knows what we cannot know. And there is, there even if it, there's a sadness in that not knowing and there's sadness in the, this in this uh, abrupt changing or and there's this, this fear, he, there is joy in him. And when we, we can stand firm in knowing that I cannot see, but I know my God can see what I cannot see. That's good, good word. So this morning, if you're concerned about your future, just trust God in it. He's got your future. Hey, John, um, I don't know if you had stepped out yesterday when um, you shared a nugget that I have never heard in my life before, and it has stuck in me, and it's going to, it already has changed my, uh, the way I think about faith. She said, so many of us think the opposite of faith is doubt. And that's not it. And Jessica, this goes right along with what Holy Spirit showed you. The opposite of faith is sight. And the scripture backs that up because he says, we don't walk by sight, we walk by faith. Isn't that cool? Yeah, that's good. In your finances, you also walk by faith. And so we're going to look at the screen this morning and make a declaration as we prepare to receive the Lord's tithe. And then our service will be taking a special offering this morning for Tommy and Michelle Hunter. But if we could um, get that first slide up. We make it making declarations for the last month, I guess. And this new series, we'll be making a different one each week. Today is the first one, and Tommy will be sharing this. Let's read this aloud together. I declare a continued flow of financial miracles in my life. Understanding Father's promises displaces any, all fears I have about global financial 
disruption. So you can't see the future, but God does, and God's not worried. He's not worried, and he's your father. So if dad's not worried, kids don't need to worry, right? We just trust. So lift your hands and tell them you're going to trust him with your finances. Father, we're going to trust you with the finances. Everything you put in our hands is yours, and we trust you, God. We thank you for who you are. We thank you for your presence. We thank you for being God. We thank you for watching over us. We thank you for your faithfulness. We thank you that you've given us faith, and we choose to walk in that faith. In Jesus' name, amen. If you have the Lord's tithe, you can bring it at this time or give online. And I want to share one amount. We can put this amount up to 18000 You can be seated. 600 and something dollars. 18607 I'm going to give you a challenge this month. This came up in our um, business meeting that we have one credit card that years ago when we were in a financial downturn, we looked, we like, what, where did we put on this? We were paying bills. Anybody ever paid bills with a credit card? Three of you, come on. How, anybody ever paid? It's not very smart, is it? Because you don't, you don't really enjoy it. For us, probably it was a lack of faith. It was just, we need to get through, pay some bills. And so now it has a high interest rate, and we've really kind of moved way beyond that. And then it was announced at our business meeting. We still have this. So we're putting a challenge out. For the next five weeks, we'd like to see it just go away. Pray with us, give towards it, let's absolve it. And I want to encourage you also, if you have credit card debt, look at your smallest one and start paying it down. You got to pay all your bills on time, right? But look at the smallest one, pay it down, and let's start having some testimonies of get ready, getting rid of credit card debt. So y'all ready to take me up on that challenge? So tackle the smallest one. It may have 200 on it, 114, 337. But tackle it, and let's celebrate as you pay that off. Well, Theony, would you come this morning? Everybody say good morning, Theony. Good morning. <laughs> Let's try that again. If I say good, you guys are going to say morning, but you have to say it the way that I say it. Are you ready? Good morning. Yes, you sound beautiful. Good morning, family. Welcome to Freedom. If you guys could do me a huge favor, turn to the camera behind us and wave to our online family and say, hey, family. Good morning, guys. I am Theony Shannon, your hostess with the mostest, a.k.a. Phoebe MC. I love you guys, and I want to say welcome to Freedom. If this is your first or your second time with us, we want to say welcome. If you could, please, there is a card in the seat back in front of you, and it's a Connect card. We would love for you to scan that and fill that out. We want to get all of the information on you. We want to know about your family, your favorite color, what you like to eat, all that good stuff because we love you, right? <laughs> and again, if you're a first or second time after service, if you can meet us at our visitor center um, in the lobby out there, we have a special gift for you. And we want to just say welcome to freedom. Guys, do you trust me? Okay. <laughs> so I have a scripture. Hold on. Okay. Get it together, girl. Okay. Galatians 6, Galatians 6 and 2 says, Bear ye one another's burdens, and so fulfill the law of Christ. We talked about this a couple of weeks ago. So I want you to turn to your neighbor and say, Neighbor, I was created to bear your burdens. All right. I want you guys to put your hands together and welcome Josh and Andrea Curtis and Miss Hannah, welcome them. <laughs> Woo! Doo, 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 doo. Gary, if you can come up with the books. Come on down. You are our contestants on the burdens, all right. Are you ready? Yes. <laughs> Gary, stay up there for me. Ladies and gentlemen, how many of you guys know that life is a burden? Life can be a burden. We have bills. We have everything. So we have our family. We have Josh Curtis. What up, Josh? He is the winner, guys, of our Mother's Day challenge last week. We have his lovely wife, Andrea Curtis. She's so beautiful. Don't you agree? And then we have my girl, my sidekick, Miss Hannah Banana. <laughs> so bear ye one another's burdens and so fulfill the law of Christ. So guess what, Hannah? You're going to be a burden today. I want you to jump in dad's arms. Dad, you're going to hold her. 
holder. Yep. Like there you go. Now, Gary, he's holding the burdens here. Gary, with him, he's got a lot of burdens. Not only does he have a teenage child, and you know that comes with like puberty and hormones and attitudes and school and all that other stuff, right? Right. So Gary, I want you to put a, some heavy, a heavy book on there right onto Hannah because that's a burden. Hannah, hold the book. All right. Now, he's got, he's got a household, he's got a family, so he's got bills. Another book. Then he's got to work, right? He's got a job. Another book. Now, is it getting heavy, Josh? The scripture says, bear you one another's burdens. Put another book. Give me your purse. <laughs> Pastor Shelley's purse. It's got 20 bricks in there. Right. Now it's heavy, right? Now... He's got a wife. The scripture says, bear one another's burdens, right? So sis, now, is he going to tell you all the things that he's carrying, even though you can see that he's struggling? So what should, he should, right? So you see him, what should you do? Take some of it off. Take some of it off. All right, so take some off. All right, now, don't get, don't get beat down after service, okay? Now, you still got to go home. All right, now, he's still, now, guess what? You are helping him with the burdens, but guess what? You yourself have some burdens, give her. Because she's a what? She's an educator. So she's got kids, bad kids in school. She's got to teach them. She's got burdens. Guess what? You have your own personal struggles. Give her another book. Give her all those books. Give her your purse. <laughs> she's carrying more burdens now. She's got all of these burdens. You get a lifeline, Andrea. Somebody in the audience, who can you call? Michelle. Michelle, y'all put your hands together and welcome Miss Michelle, looking so lovely. Michelle is coming. She came to help her with her burdens. Look at that. Woo, she took all the burdens. Come on, girl. Honey, she said, because I'm every woman, except you're not. Why? Because you took on her burdens, but you have your own. You got a husband. He will take your burdens, and you have a whole ministry. Yeah. And you have probably businesses, a right? A couple of businesses. Yeah. And then you have your own things that you deal with yeah. internally. Yeah, so you have, have your, you, and, oh, a child got kids. <laughs> Y'all pray for them. So you see as one is carrying the burden, somebody else helps to take it. And then they may be dealing with their burdens, and somebody else helps them to take it. The scripture says that we have to bear one another's burdens. Even though you may have your own, if you ask and you say, hey, I need your help, but the key is you have to ask. You can't be like Josh and say, no, I'm going to hold on to all of this. Why? Because look at him. He's sweating. Look at him. It's terrible. It's terrible. He is struggling. We should leave him up there the rest of service to hold her, right? to teach him a lesson. No, go ahead, you can put her down. But guys, I said all that to say, on June 30th, we are having a block party. Look to your neighbor and say block party. Thank you, Miss Michelle. We are having a block party, right? Because our model is from neighborhoods to nations. So this neighborhood, all back here, right? They all belong to us. And they're gonna be coming with burdens. Okay, they're going to be coming with kids, with divorces, with issues, with addictions. They're going to be coming with, you know, all types of, of, of life stressors, right? And we have to be prepared to bear their burdens. Now, we're throwing a block party, but I believe that that's going to open the floodgates of freedom. Why? Because now this building belongs to us. Praise God, right? So we have a stake here. So I want you guys to please, in the next coming weeks, I believe it's starting in June, Pastor Mike, with prayer. So um, in June, on Wednesdays for prayer and Saturdays for, uh, for core prayer, we're going to be canvassing the community, walking around and praying. We want you to please join us. Join us so that we can prepare the atmosphere and really till the ground and get ready for the influx of people that are coming because they're coming and they're coming with their birds. They're coming with everything. Okay, June 30th is the block party. Guys, put your hands together for the Curtis family. Now, see, that wasn't so hard, was it? Right, that was easy, that was easy. <laughs> okay, guys, again, I wanna say thank you so much for having me, and uh, welcome to Freedom. <laughs> Next, we have the video. I have a 
question for you. Okay, what is it? What condiment should you always use in May? I don't know. Mayo, get it? No, I don't get it. Good morning, morning everyone, everyone, and, and welcome, welcome to freedom. freedom. Maybe you need Chick-fil-A sauce. Yeah. Join us this week, Monday through Friday at noon for midday prayer. We are praying for Israel. We meet in our main auditorium from noon to 1 p.m. If you can make it on your lunch break, we hope to see you there. Tune in to Hope for Today with John this Saturday, May 27th at 11 a.m. on Facebook, YouTube, or wherever you listen to podcasts. John will have special guest, General Mike Miller, as they talk about eternal hope. What is God saying about you? Tune in for a great conversation. This is an episode you don't want to miss. Join us this Saturday at 6 p.m. for Passionate Core Prayer. We gather in person in the main auditorium for a powerful time of prayer and intercession. It's a great way to end your week. The third of five trips to Las Vegas this year is June 14th through 17th. The first trip was an apostolic planning. The second trip was prophetic engagement. This trip is worship saturation. Mike Coleman will be training worship leaders from Las Vegas and around the nation and writing songs of victory for Las Vegas. Intercessors are needed to go out into the city and pray and worship as the worship leaders are writing. The cost is $1,475 and that's all inclusive. The money's due June 1st, so sign up today using the QR code in the seat back in front of you. Attention all ladies, we have a women's conference coming up in June. I'll pass it off to Dewana to share more about it. Hey everyone, I'm Dewana Quintana and I am super excited about what is happening in our community right here in Ellis County, right here in Waxahachie, Texas. This is Lori. Lori, tell us what is going on with the women. We are going to have a conference, the She Will Anchor Deep Conference. Ooh, anchor Deep. Yeah. Anchor Deep, uh, getting anchored deep with Jesus. It's going to be on Saturday, June 24th. The cost is $25. That's nothing. We're going to feed you lunch. We're going to give you some uh, good materials to work through and take home. It's going to be an awesome time. We want every woman who can in Ellis County and the surrounding areas to come, come and be a part of the conference with us. Register today. Something else we have coming up in June is the new semester of our Freedom Groups. They begin Sunday, June 11th. So stay tuned for more information coming out soon. Don't miss out on the connection and the fellowship. We are always better together. That's all we have for now. Thanks for joining today. I'd gladly pay you Tuesday for a hamburger today. Okay, some of you are saying, who is that? Who is that? Wimpy, he's on the Popeye series. And so that's his tagline, I'll gladly pay you Tuesday for hamburger today. You know what that talks about? I'm going to live my life on credit. And we're uh, fighting against that these next five weeks and declaring blessings in the finances that God has put in your care to steward. And so today we're glad to kick that off. And I'm so happy to have uh, Tommy and Michelle Hunter. Yesterday, we concluded our marriage conference. I think we had 19 couples. It was fantastic. I mean, so many great testimonies, so much power, freedom, and deliverance in our lives. We love this couple. They've uh, been in our lives now for, I think, four or five years, 
Six years, wow. I forget the pandemic. So six years, went to Honduras, did a mar marriage conference there. Uh, we love this couple. And so today, as Tommy shares the word of God, I want you to be generous with an offering, and I want you to bring it, even if you're giving online, write on your envelope how much you're giving online, and still bring an envelope down here and bother him as he preaches. It's not going to bother him. But come and just lay an offering down to let them know, hey, I'm supporting who you are, what you're doing, what God is doing in your life. They are busy people. They have businesses. They have ministries. They are involved in a local church. They do a lot, and we're so glad to have them here today. So would you welcome Tommy and Michelle Hunter? Hey, hey. Good morning. No, I really liked your good morning. I don't, I don't know if I can duplicate that, but, you know. But, man, you know what I would really like to duplicate everywhere I go? is the presence of God we experienced this morning, huh? Come on. <laughs> Nothing like his presence. Such a, such a beautiful time. Shelly, thank you for that, just leading us in that. And um, what's interesting is that everything you did up here is everything that's in this message. So God knows. God knows, right? Because God sees it before it even happens, right? Uh, yeah, as, as, as John and had said we've known these guys for a few years and have done uh, quite a bit of ministry with them, and it's, it's an honor to serve you guys today. It is just an absolute honor to be here, and I just want to do this. I want to honor your, your, your leadership and your pastors, so would you please stand to your feet and give these guys a big round of applause, please. We honor you today, John and Shelley. We thank you for your commitment, your dedication, and your encouragement at all times. Thank you so much. I really like that declaration. Um, oh, now there we go. All right. I declare a continued flow of financial miracles in my life. Understanding Father's promises displaces any and all fears I have about global financial disruption. You know what I? You know what I see when I when I when I read that? I see that it's time for you and I to rise up. It's time to rise up in our faith to get up and get out of our little slumber and our sleep and to do something about what's going on because we serve a God that is bigger than anything going on in this world today. It is time to rise. And it's your time to rise. It's my time to rise. And I want to show you something here in Proverbs 24, 16, where it says, for a just man falls seven times and rises up again, but the wicked shall fall into mischief. Now, at first glance, this passage seems not very reassuring. However, the inspiration comes when one realizes that uh, for the one who is doing right, failure is not the end of the road. So I want to I want to consider five specific things around this scripture that that I saw, and I thought, man, this is this is gonna this is gonna preach here. Watch this. First, it makes a, we, we see that it makes a difference how you're living when you fall. Making mistakes versus getting caught. You know, Pastor Shelley was talking about that, right? I can be over here, I can fall down because I made a mistake. I did something stupid, I did something dumb, right? I didn't intentionally make that mistake, it just happened, right? And then I go over here, and then I just go and I do what I want to do. I do my will, not his. But wouldn't you know that God is still in love with you. He just loves you so much either way, right? But I want to be found making mistakes, not intentionally doing things, right? It's all about that. Second, it says a just man will fall. You know why? Because we are just man and we are just woman. Life happens. It's gonna, life is going to hit us hard sometimes and we're going to fall. We're going to get, but the best thing we can do is get back up. Third, a just man will fall. It's not a matter of if, but when. We're going we're gonna, to we're gonna mess up. Right. It's going to happen. This is, this is all about working out our salvation, right? It's a process. And we, as we learned yesterday in the marriage conference, it's a process in getting to know your spouse. It's a process in making your marriage epic. Right, right, right church? Yeah. People who were there yesterday, come on. 
Fourth, a just man will fall more than once. In our pursuit, we'll hit bumps in the road. This is where I find that we all grow, right, if you allow yourself to. And lastly, a just man will get back up, shake it off, learn the lesson, move on. Don't stay stuck where you fall, okay? And remember what it says here, failure is not final. Just because you've made a mistake. You know, I find in business that sometimes we make mistakes, and you know what? I recognize that that's not final. It's a learning lesson, right? right? We just get up and we learn how to do it better, yeah. right? And, and then I, and I took a look at like the, the significance of falling seven times. It, it, and I believe that it, it's, it's simply referring to falling frequently or, or many times. But the number seven is often, it's a number of completeness, completeness or perfection in Scripture. It may illustrate here that no matter how many times a righteous man falls, and no matter if he falls, if his fall seems to be completely and utterly irreversible, the setback is only temporary. Isn't that good news? The setback is only temporary. He is, or she is, destined to rise again. What if I make the same mistake? What if you succeed? Come on, did you hear that? What if you succeed? I think we, the problem is that we're always operating in fear. Oh, I don't know if I can do that. I don't know if I can give like that. You know, and we're, we're in the, this series where it's like it's time, it's time to give. The $18,000 debt, it's time to rise up and let's knock that debt out. But I don't know, I got bills. I don't know if I can pay my bills. You know what fear is? It's false evidence appearing real. False evidence appearing real. You know what I say we do? I say we flip the script on, on that thing and we just face everything and rise. Come on. How about stop operating in fear? Stop operating in, in what, what you know you, you can't do, but only with God can you, can you get there. Just like the young lady was talking about today. I can't see it. Good. Because if you saw it, you'd mess it up. And you know what? I taught this to the, to the, to the, the folks yesterday. Hey, do we, do we try anymore, team, from yesterday? What do we do? We just do it, right? Like a Nike commercial. Stop trying to do it and just do it. For those of you that weren't there yesterday, can you imagine? You walk up to the altar to get married. And, I, and I'm gonna use, I'll use Eden and Will again as an example. Eden comes, Will's standing here waiting for her. It's all, the glory of God is just shining down on him, right? It's all beautiful. John and Shelly are super anxious. They're like, oh my gosh, this is amazing. And he said, and, and let's just say I'm doing the wedding. And I say, Will, do you take Eden to be your lawfully wedded wife to hold, you know, all the things forever and ever and sickness and and all that? And he goes, I'll try. How many of you? You know, you know what Eden said she'd do? She goes, I would run. <laughs> so let's be a church of doers and not a church of triers. Can we commit to that today? Come on. In fact, take the word try out of your vocabulary. And, if, and, and, and I just want to declare this right now. If you use the word try in this church, you owe John and Shelly $100 every time. Okay? We good with that, guys? All right, John and like, yeah, amen. Listen, you're gonna fall, you're gonna make mistakes, it's what you do after, so just get up, okay? And really guard falling into your feelings. How many of you know you can fall into them feelings, them emotions, oh, woe is me, and then you get stuck. You, gotta, you have to guard that. You fall in there, recognize you're there, and get back up. Hey, wait a minute, that is not for me. Right? Feelings go like this. I think feelings lie, right? They, they, they want you to feel a certain thing so that you'll get stuck in a certain thing. That's not for you. Get up and get out. And I also believe, as I said earlier, growing starts when we hit the ground. I believe when we hit the ground, grace has, it catches us there. But you know what happens? Mercy pulls us back up. It's grace and mercy, his mercy and his goodness. Right? Come on. 
I, I love what Paul wrote in Ephesians 6. He wrote that, you know, we're, we're gonna trip up, we're gonna trip, but to be aware of what's going on around you. Be aware of the things that are there to trip you up. Be aware that there's an enemy who wants to knock you down. And what does Paul say three different times? He goes, stand. In fact, he says, do everything you can to stand. And when you've done everything you can do, stand, right? So what's he saying? Be aware, be on guard. Something's coming at you. It's gonna try to knock you down. But you have the ability to stand. Come on. All right, so Pastor Shelley said, okay, I fall down, made a mistake. Fall down, I did, and I purposely did it over here. That's what we call sin, right? Purposely just do what I wanna do, my will. God, I got this, don't worry about me. I'm too blessed to be stressed. So we missed the mark, that's it. Get up, move on, do a 180, go the other direction. I think we get so tied up that, oh my gosh, I sinned, and then we just stay stuck in our sin. Sin means I've missed the mark. Get back up, pull the arrow back, shoot again, let's keep going, okay? Come on. And, and let me just say this, impossible is just an opinion, not a fact, okay? I know this, God would rather you fall down and get back up than to watch you lay there and do nothing. So, Thank you. Somebody, somebody got that one, right? James 1.12 says this. It says, blessed. Everybody say blessed. blessed. There we go. Is the man or woman who remains steadfast under trial. What does that mean? Trials are coming. <laughs> okay, remember, stand, be ready. They're coming. For when he has stood the test, he or she will, here's the promise, receive the crown of life, which God has promised to those who love him. So don't give up and don't settle for anything less than God's very, very best. Don't settle. Where's all my single ladies at? Don't settle for anything than God's very best. Where's all my single guys at? None. One. John, we need to do some work here in Waxahachie, okay? We need to get all the single guys here. Because I got all the single ladies, all the single ladies, right? You've been single for a while. Let's go. Come on. I've known you for years. Let's go. I, there, hey, there was this young man over here raised his hand. I don't know what you're waiting on. You need to stop walk, working out in the, the parking lot there and maybe mingle around in here. A little prayer time in the morning, sir. Because I know she's a prayer warrior. I know that lady. So when we look at this thing, we see that there are two types, two types of people here. There's the, there's the just man and there's the wicked man. I believe the difference is this what and who they are pursuing. What and who they are pursuing. The route of righteousness always leads to what is good, whereas the road of wickedness always ends in ruin and destruction. Now, I want to give you the, the, the traits or the, the characteristics of a just man. Okay, you're going to see this, and we're going to go the other direction in a minute. But the just man, he's truthful. And he's truthful with himself, because here in Proverbs 27, 19, it says, as in water reflects the face, so the heart of man reflects the man. This would mean that a man's heart, meaning the essence of man himself, can be known by the way he conducts his life. If this is the intent, then it means that one thing to say what one believes, but what one believes can be more accurately shown by how one lives. I'm a Christian, I'm, I'm, you know, too blessed to be stressed, I'm all this. Yeah, but do you live like that? Did you just come here today to check the box and then tomorrow, you know, you hear it, go to church on Sunday, look like, live like hell the rest of the week, right? What's your life? Is there evidence in your life? Are you truthful with people? Because I can tell you, who I am standing right here on this stage is who I am in public. Who I am here is who I am in private. 
There is, there is no difference. In, in what, you know what? I used to be the fakest Christian there was, so I understand what this means. I'd show up here and be like, oh, the greatest preacher, and then, then go out there and, and, and abuse my wife, go have an affairs on my wife. So I know what it means to be truthful. He's real with himself. He's real about what he's not. But he's willing to get up and trust God to take him places he's never been before. That means doing the hard things. If you're taking notes, write that down. Make that your mantra for the rest of the year. Do the hard things. And the hard things will become the easy things. And then you go and you build up some more, and you keep growing, and you do more hard things. We have this beautiful lady right here. Michelle, can you just stand up for a quick sec? Everybody saw you earlier. Turn around and say hi, everybody. Okay, so this is my beautiful, amazing wife, right? And for the first, first four years, four and a half years of our marriage, it was hard. It was horrible. I was a monster. She was whacked out. And that's putting it nicely. Um, but, you know, anyway, long story short is we did it the hard way. But then we decided, okay, we got divorced, got remarried, and then we had to do some hard work up front, what we thought was hard. But the, the more we did the hard things, the easier it became, and the easier it became. And now, we hear our, now we're here 10 years later, we've got an epic love story, and this is the easiest person in the world for me. Like, there is nothing hard about this. Doesn't mean we don't still do the work. We still work. And you know what? We still... Um, Challenge ourselves to be greater and better every day because I want to do the hard things because I want the hard things to become the easy things. First Timothy 6.11 pursues the right things, but for you, as for you, O man of God, flee these things, pursue. Watch this, here it is. Here's the pursuit of a just man. Righteousness, godliness, faith, Love, steadfastness, and gentleness. And I said this to the men yesterday, and I'll say it again to the men that are in this room. Stop trying to be a tough guy. Your wife and your kids don't need a tough guy. They need a, they need a guy who is pursuing righteousness, godliness, faith, love, steadfastness, and gentleness. That's the guy they need. Uh, is an encourager. Iron sharpens iron. We talked about this. Iron sharpens iron. And we, we hear that all the time. And we're like, yeah. And what we do is we call each other out on our stuff. And sometimes that's done the wrong way. I say find somebody who, as you're sharpening each other's iron, you know, somebody's going to get cut in that thing. Because they're going to tell you what you need to hear and not what you want to hear. But find somebody who will do that for you. And in the process of that thing, somebody's gonna bleed. So find somebody you can bleed with, okay? Find somebody who's gonna encourage you at the right time, but is also gonna tell you truth all the time. That's what I have found in this lady right here. I can tell her my deepest, darkest, ugliest stuff, and you know what? She tells me truth to back it, to, to, to encourage me, to get me going. When they had preached the gospel to the city of Acts 14, 21, 22, to the city and had made many disciples, they returned to Lystra and Iconium and to Antioch. Here it is, watch this. Strengthening the souls of the disciples. Church, it is your job, it is my job, it's our job to strengthen the people who come into this place. As she prophesied earlier, there are people coming. They, now that this building is yours, it, the, 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 it's like the hands are off of it, the, the lease is off of it. People are coming. Are you ready to strengthen them? Because people are hurting. People are tripping out. They're freaking out about the world and the economy and everything else. The wimpies are coming. Do you understand? The wimpies are gonna come in and say, hey, you know what, can I just have a hamburger today? I'll, I'll, I'll pay you down the road. You gotta be ready to have a hamburger ready for them encouraging them to continue in the faith. I need encouragement to continue in my faith sometimes. 
Sometimes when I see the church and I see what's happening in the church, I get frustrated. And then I just go, I, now, I do that in the privacy of my own home. I don't do that in public. And my beautiful wife encourages me to just keep on going, Tommy, keep on going. Jesus is coming. Just keep going. And saying that through many tribulations, we must enter the kingdom of God was the rest. Some of you, you need to get help. Some of you, you need, you need help. And you know what? That's okay. It's okay. That's what this place right here you're sitting in is for. You cannot do this thing called life all by yourself. You weren't designed or developed to. That is not how God created you. God created us, every one of us, for relationship. Okay? Now, that was the just man. Okay? That was the guy who falls, gets back up, and... Before I go further, I'm just wondering, like, which one of these guys I'm resembling today, because I'm tripping out. There's a Popeye, there's a Brutus. Thank God I don't look like Wimpy, wherever he's at. I think I'll take Brutus, but anyway, all right. I don't know, sidetrack, sorry. Since the, the Bible speaks of, a, of, of just a man, and he refused to get up. He refused to have any responsibility, and this particular guy became super complacent. These, is what, these are the guys that I find are like the wimpy mentality folks. They expect everybody else to take care of them and yet not offer anything up in, you know, at all. Watch John 5.1. Watch what this says. It says, afterward, Jesus returned to Jerusalem for one of the Jewish holy days. Inside the city near the sheep gate was the pool of Bethesda with five covered porches. Now, this thing about the, the pool of Bethesda. Now, we look at Scripture, we read this, and we think, oh, that, that's a cool place. You know, that's a place of healing. But it, it's actually, it's not. It's actually a pagan-created pool. It, it is a man-made pool for them to believe. It's kind of like um, a New Age thing. And it's this New Age pool where if, if, if you just happen to be lucky on the right day, in the right moment, an angel would lean down from heaven and take their finger and stir the pool. And if you just happened to be there at the right time, right moment, and you got in there, you would be healed. And it's just a lie. How many lies, how many things are out there that, that we see in the world and we just adopt them? We make them our truth. When I hear people say, well, that's my truth. I'm gonna, you know what I say? You know what goes to my mind? That's kind of like the pool of Bethesda. It's just a man-made truth. I want to know God's truth because his word stands alone and it, it is just pure, it's holy, and it's right, and it guides me and it leads me in the right direction. You may not lead me in the right direction with your truth. I'll always be safe in his truth. Watch this. And it says now that there were crowds of sick people, blind, lame, paralyzed, and they were all laying around. All the wimpies laying around. And he says right here, he says, and one of the men lying there had been sick for 38 years. Now, folks, the man was there for 38 years, right? The pool was like, let's say the stairs of the pool. You think he'd have been like, like inching over, right? I mean, I mean, think about it. He got there somehow 38 years ago. You know what happened to him? He saw everybody else laying around. They were, they were handing out the food. The, you know, the soup kitchens were, 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 were coming around. The churches were coming around, and here you go, here you go. And they were like, oh, somebody else going to take care of me now. And 38 years later, he was still there. Oh, my gosh, 38 years? Like some of us are laying around for 38 years letting everybody else take care of us when you have a, a, a plan, a purpose that God created for you, and now it's your time and your turn to take care of somebody else. And look, watch this. And when Jesus saw him, he knew he had been there for a long time, and he asked him, would you like to get well? Let me ask you this. Wherever you're at, wherever you're stuck, wherever, whatever's going on, would you like to get well? Let me, let me put it in another tone, turn, turn. 
would you like to be healed? Here's the response. I can't, sir, for I have no one to put me into the pool when the water bubbles up. Bro, you've been sitting there 38 years. Like, you couldn't ask somebody else, like, hey, can, can you just push me? Like, roll me over, right? Excuses, excuses, excuses. I can't, I won't, I don't know, right? I'll try. And he goes, and he goes, someone else always gets there before me. Someone else always gets their blessing before me. Somebody, someone always gets their financial breakthrough before me. Somebody always gets to the pastor before me. Come on, right? Let's talk the Christianese church stuff. Now, this is what happens in the church. It's the blame game. It's the making excuses. The blame game's been happening since Adam and Eve. Nothing new. What I love about this is Jesus says, just stand up and walk. Like, that tells me Jesus already knew that he could walk. He's like, just get up. He, notice that Jesus didn't say, be healed. He said, just stand up and walk. Right. And I'm just telling you this here today. Some of you are so stuck, it's just time to stand up and walk. You're stuck in your feelings, you're stuck in your emotions, you're stuck in your past, you're stuck in the hurt, you're stuck in your selfishness. It's time to stand up and just walk. You can applaud, it's okay, I know you're with me. So we see, and again, Jesus asked him, would you like to get well? Why does Jesus ask him this question? It's because Jesus knows that not every sick person wants to be well because they like the attention they get being, being sick. And let me just say this, you can't want something more for somebody than they don't, they don't want for themselves. So would you like to get well? It's kind of like that, how many of you have seen that commercial? I've fallen and I can't get up, right? This is what this guy, 38 years ago, I've fallen and I can't get up. He didn't have his life alert on or something, I don't know, right? For I have no one to put me into the pool when the water bubbles up. Excuses, excuses. When, when Jesus says stand up, pick, pick, pick up your mat and walk, I really believe he's challenging him to believe the impossible. I believe we heard, we heard that word from the Lord today that we need to start believing and have faith for the unseen and the impossible. I believe it's time for us to rise up and just walk. And by faith, not by sight, and just walk this thing out and go, God, whatever you have, whatever it is, I'm all in, I'm going forward. And, and, and what, I, what I also see here is, that Jesus is stirring up this man's faith, not stirring up the, pool, the bubbles in the pool. Some of y'all need to stir up your faith. Like that word right there you gave this morning, stirred up my faith. Pastor Shelley with the, I, 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 I'm, I'm, Shelley, I could have just been here for the next three days just in worship with holy, holy, holy. My faith just rose up so greatly because I wish every church got the, the message that this is what it looks like to be the church or the kingdom of God. That we are to just praise him and worship him. But everybody wants to put on their dance song and all that stuff and you know just do the cues just right. And that's what I love about freedom. None of that exists here. It's just pure worship. That's, that's stirring up faith right there. It's the, the presence of heaven. I was so overwhelmed in it. Look, that pool will not heal you. Only, hear me quickly, hear me. From this side to this side, listen, in front to back. Jesus is the only one who can heal you. The only one. No, no little crystals, no rocks, no, you know, rubbing the statues, none of that. Only Jesus can heal you. And again, right here, there it is. 
So someone's always getting there before me. Somebody's always getting their breakthrough first, their better job first, their spouse first, their relationship restored first. Get up and walk. Start doing the work. Get up and do something about it. But you know what we do? We get stuck in this victim mindset. And my notes just froze, but I'm good. There we go. We, cre- we create value around the circumstance of the situation. It's almost like, like a badge of honor. Look at me. I've been wounded. Let me walk in the church and let me just show people how wounded I am. <laughs> That's not attractive either. Okay? So I tell, tell single ladies, man, you better, you better get healed soon because all that stuff you're carrying around, you're never gonna attract the right guy. A broken person will attract a broken person. You know how I know? I married her. But then I remarried the healed person. And then I got healed. And now here we are touching and healing and just loving on people, okay? And all of that, just all of that anyway is just, just trying to get, att- wanting to get attention from people. Which then our belief system becomes that God's power is never enough because we limit his ability based upon our own natural limits. I will. Which then our belief system becomes that God's power is never enough because we limit his ability based upon our own natural limits. Playing the victim got them more attention than being whole, healthy, and healed. That guy laying there got more attention for 38 years than he probably would have if he was just walking the streets. If you're looking for attention, it's kind of like that old country song, you know? Looking for love in all the wrong places. Man, that sounded pretty good. I'm getting better. Uh, Hey, I, I might be on the worship team next week. You never know. You wonder why you got with the wrong person, you got the wrong situation, whatever it is, because you're the wrong person. I remember when, when we lived in Long Beach and we, years ago, we pastored a church down there for five years. We would walk the streets, we would pray for the sick. We, would, we, would, we, we lived out Matthew 10, 8, where it says, heal the sick, raise the dead, cleanse the lepers, cast out demons, freely you receive, freely you give. Man, we, we dealt with the demonic. We dealt with all kinds of crazy stuff when we were there. And, I, and we experienced like all kinds of uh, people without homes and uh, those men and women often approach us. And you know what I noticed for some of them? No, certainly not all of them. That there's, there was no real desire to be freed from, from homelessness. In the state of California, because that's where we're from, we're from San Diego. In the state of California, you get a certain amount of hotel rooms uh, per month. You get, I think it's two or three hundred dollars per month. You get like free health care. You get, and then there's the, the 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 churches that come around and feed you every week. And you're living in Southern California at the beach. Like, why would I need to like go to work and like get a house and have all that responsibility? Because I like just laying on my mat. And it's, you know, some of us are the same way. We just don't really want to be healed. Don't really want God to do a work in me because then if he does a work in me, that means then I have to do something with what he's done. See, See, he took my stubborn, stony heart and replaced it with his soft heart, Ezekiel 36, 26. He replaced my heart and now I'm doing something with it. Because that was my purpose all along. That was the plan all along. He knew the beginning or the end from the beginning and he saw that I was gonna make all these mistakes and I was gonna fall down here and I was gonna intentionally do stuff here. But God had a purpose and a plan and he said, watch, watch. When Tommy turns 44, he's actually gonna put away childish things, grow up and become a man and he's gonna walk out his purpose. It took him 44 years, but he finally got up and did something with it. I took, I took all the molestation and all the rape that was done to me and all that stuff, and now I flipped it and turned it around and said, no, devil, you won't have me anymore. I 
will stand for the Lord and I will preach it to the mountain from the mountaintops that he is good, he is amazing and his goodness and his mercy shall follow me all the days of my life and I shall dwell in the house of the Lord forever. But see, I got up off my mat event finally. Didn't stick, stick in my victimness. Because let me tell you, I was a victim. I was wimpy. Then everybody else take care of me. But let me just say this. You know where I learned that victim mentality, though? Whew. Hopefully my mom doesn't watch this. But I really learned that stuff from my parents, from my mom. Because my observation became my imitation. Parents, your, your kids are looking at everything and watching everything you do. And if you don't like what they're becoming, maybe you need to look in the mirror and go, what, well, who am I showing them? Ouch, that hurt, didn't it? What I'm saying to you is get up off your mat and do something different. I'm not condemning you. I'm challenging you. Jesus asking whether this, really what Jesus was asking this guy was, he's like, do you want a new reality? Do you want a new life? And that's the crucial question that Jesus asks, you know, all of us. He's like, do you want to be healed? I want you to ask yourself that question. Do I want to be healed? You know, in, in marriage coaching, which we do quite a bit of, um, we find that intellectually, People want a great marriage up here. They want a healed marriage. They, they, they want the epic love story. But you know what they want us to do? They want us to do all the work for them. <laughs> I'm like, just get up off your mat, man. Like, do it, right, Josh? You just Six years ago, Josh, I came to him, and we had, some, we had a talk, and I said, dude, get up off your mat. Go get with Andrea and get this thing right. And they're, they're, they're walking out their epic love story. Christian and his wife, same thing. I said, hey, man, stop being a victim and get up and go do something. That's why they're wearing those warrior shirts, because that's who they are today, because they become overcomers. Because you know what? They did the hard things. And they're still doing the hard things. Amen? Just like at the pool, waiting on someone else to do the work for them. We have, we, we'll, we'll say, hey, uh, you know, they want to know how, how to have this great marriage. We we'll go, well, here's what you do. You go, you look at what your, what your brokenness is, and you take scripture, and you take that scripture, apply it to what that is, let God heal you with his word. And they're like, hey, can you tell us where all those scriptures are? <laughs> no. I know where they're at because I did the work up front. It's your turn now. It's your turn to rise up and do something with it. You want, to, you want to know how to change your life? You want something different? Don't keep calling John and Shelly. Actually open the book. I am. I need to take you everywhere I go. She says good morning just so wonderfully. Cheerleader all night, all day. Come on. You guys are blessed to have her here, huh? Come on. I believe, man, that guy showed up there and laid there for 38 years when he saw everybody else laying there playing that victim, got him fed, got him taken care of, got him sympathy, got him all the attention in the world, all playing right into that victim lifestyle. It became his identity. Think about this. This guy, for the rest of eternity, is known as the guy for 38 years on the mat. Is that what you want to be known for? I, I like the fact that, like, John was like, you know, he was as close to Jesus as he could be. He had his head on his chest. That's, how, that's, where it's, that's what I want to be known for, that guy, right, for all of eternity. Crazy. Stop wasting your life on someone else to do what you have the ability and faith to do. Let me say it slower. Stop wasting your life waiting on someone else to do what you have the ability and the faith to do. 
You may not see it, and that is perfectly okay. Just get up off your mat. Some of you are, are laying around in fear, anxiety, depression. And I just want you to know, did you know that it's scientifically proven that if you exercise on a regular basis, anxiety, fear, and depression can't even enter your body? And you wonder, what, you wonder you're sitting around going, oh, life sucks. This is horrible. My, oh, everybody's not for me. Get up and go to the gym. Get up and go to, for a walk. I can tell you this, when I'm in the gym, I have no anxiety, I have no fear, I've got nothing, I'm just in there to pump weights and get this, this 50, almost 55-year-old body looking like a 35-year-old body. I know I'm getting there, I'm almost there, I'm at 37, I'm, okay, got a couple more years. <laughs> but honestly, like, if you're feeling down, you're feeling whatever, that's the enemy trying to oppress you and get you depressed and get you down. So it's time for you to get up off your butt, get outside and go for a walk and go, oh my gosh, the endorphins are flowing. I don't feel stressed and anxiety anymore. This is great. And next thing you know, you're 10 pounds lighter. Amazing how that works. I'll tell you this. And this is, this is, this is gonna hurt a couple people. And I'm not intentionally meaning that though. Some of you, week after week after week after week, you live paycheck to paycheck to paycheck. And there's an opportunity week after week after week, probably multiple times a week. I don't know how many times the doors are open, but there's multiple times throughout the week that you get to do stuff like this. <coughs> you get to give your tithe, you get to give your offering, right? Really bless God because that's what you're doing when you do this, you're blessing God. And you know what God does? He flips it around and then he turns around and blesses you yeah. bigger than you could ever think or even imagine but we lay there on the mat watching everybody else walk up for every week after week after week. And we wonder why we're just struggling so hard. Because week after week after week, you're just laying there letting everybody else take care of the church. Nine years, nine and a half years ago, 10 years ago, I was broke, like broke, broke, right? In fact, the, the, the day that we got back together, I believe it was Mother's Day 10 years ago. I parked my car in a, I did not know it was a tow zone. And of course, it's day one that we're back together and my car gets towed. I don't have a job and I don't have any money and I don't know how I'm gonna get my car. But my wife, who has never stopped tithing for I don't know how many years now, God made a way because of her obedience and her faithfulness to get us our car back. Fast forward to today, standing in front of you as a millionaire. Now, let me share with you how I got there, okay? Because I didn't just wake up one day just it all just fell in my pocket. No, I, ha I, I chose to be obedient and faithful to God's word. And this is where I got out of the wimpy mentality, okay? Let's just go, f there, there was a job that I really wanted and it paid excellent money. And because I believe, because we were faithfully tithing and faithfully sowing with the very little that we had, we just kept going, kept going, even when, when we couldn't, God knew it, and he still sees it, because it's still coming. It's getting bigger and greater. But wouldn't you know it that this job, you had to have a college degree for, which I do not have. And a, a guy with a PhD applied for the job, and a guy with a master's degree applied for the job, and God's son, Tommy Hunter, his favorite son, got the job. Wait, but wait, there's more, okay? The job that I was previously in, they were hoarding my, my commissions. They weren't paying me my commissions to the tune of about 30 grand. So I, God finally released me. I got this job and whatever. I, was, I, I, I didn't really look at my offer letter. And it's a good, good amount of money. But Michelle, she's the fine, she's the fine you know, print kind of chick right there. She goes, hey, 
you're getting a $60,000 sign-on bonus with this job because God gave me double for my trouble. Do you see that? So fast forward, making great money, doing all this stuff. We're, we're starting businesses and we're, that's starting to increase. And, and we're, we don't advertise anything for any of our stuff. And all of a sudden, you know, we, we merge with this company. Oh, by the way, I made partner in the firm that I work for too, by the way. Just, that's another whole God story. Come on, okay? <sighs> They, took, they, they, they basically took my quota and they doubled it. This new company came in and said, oh, we're going to double your quota. I'll be honest with you, I wanted to see where it was coming from. I'm like, I, I, I got no faith right now. You know what I mean? For three days, I tripped out. And then I remembered, wait a minute. God took me from nothing to this. My God can do anything. And he will. Because he can do everything and anything because he wants to. And so I said, okay, hey, hey, Shell, here's what we're going to do. We're going to increase our tithe. Because the natural mind says, let me back off and let me hold on because I got to prepare for what, you know, what we might not make. I said, uh-uh, we're going forth and we're going deep. So watch this. The next year, which is the year I'm in now, they increased my, my, my quota again. I'm like, okay, God, here we go. We're, we're increasing again. We're almost at 20% in tithe. My goal is to get to about 30 or 40% because I believe God can and will. And that is not bragging on me, though it may sound that way. That is completely 100% bragging on our Father because he, not my job, is my provider. But see, what I did was I rose up and said, nope, I ain't going to go lay back down on that mat. I'm getting up and I'm running forward and I'm tithing. In fact, there's a... Um, I, I've, I've gotten to the place where I want to be such a blessing and so generous because it's one of the things I teach how, that, how men should be. My wife's got my wallet. And normally I have it in my pocket, but I carry a stack of $100 bills in there. Balling, right? I, I am not allowed to touch that money other than to be a blessing to people. Because God has so blessed me that I want to bless others. And you know what happens when I'm blessing others? I get opportunity to share the goodness of God with them. That's my way of rising up and get them to come up with me. Some of you need to get that down. Maybe start with $5, but do something. Aren't we believers? Yeah. Don't we have faith? So what are we believing for? Do you believe that our God is greater and he's good? Or is it just a song that we sing to make ourselves feel good? We gotta do something with it. It's a faith requires action because without it, it's dead. And let me tell you, I drove by a church on the way here this morning and I've been there because I've, Michelle and I've done a marriage conference there before and that church, from what we experienced, no Holy Spirit and to me that is a dead church. That means they don't need faith to come to church. They just need to go and do, check their box. So thank you both for creating a space and an atmosphere for people to express their faith and experience faith. What an amazing place. This is the mat. 38 years. 38 years of victim mentality. 38 years of excuses. Can you imagine how gross the mat was? <laughs> right? He could have washed it in the pool if he had just inched over, right? <laughs> Excuse me, I'm gonna wash this in the pool real quick. Here's, here's, here's what I believe you all need to do with this mat. Ready? Kick it, get rid of it. It's no longer yours. Get rid of the excuses, get rid of the reason, get rid of the trying. Start doing, start walking by Faith, rise up. I'll, I'll, I'll land the plane here. Watch this. So the guy gets up, right? And he walks. He's walking through town, and, and the Jewish leaders are like, who told you that you could work on the Sabbath? He was carrying a mat. They considered that work. 
Wouldn't we like to have that kind of job? <laughs> Picking that thing up and walking around all day. The, the, the law doesn't allow you to carry that, that, that sleeping mat. And he replies, the man who healed me told me to pick up your mat and walk. Who said such a thing they demanded? The man didn't know for Jesus appeared, disappeared to the crowd. When I read that, it just hit me right here. It was like, Jesus didn't stick around and go, look what I did. I am super Jesus. <laughs> he didn't like, you know, like puff out his cape or anything or have to stick around for all the accolades and all the other stuff, right? Jesus said, pick up your mat, and then he walked away. You know why? Because he had other people to go talk to. He had other people to, to get healed. He had other things to do besides stick around and just hang out and get all the, the, the attention, all the accolades. You know what? That guy had been laying there for 38 years. He got enough attention and stuff. And if you're, if you're praying for people and you want everybody to see it, you're doing it for the wrong motive and reason. But afterwards, Jesus found this guy and he found him in the temple and he tells him, hey, look, now, now that you're well, stop sinning. That, I, that, that part, I understand. This part, Stop it. Whatever it is, stop it. Because what might come next might be worse, the Bible says. You, you, you keep doing this and what's coming next. After I've already healed you from that, after, I, after I've healed you from divorce, I've healed you from, from uh, pain meds, I've healed you from uh, porn addiction, I've healed you from whatever it is, stop it. Because what's coming next is going to be worse. And you know, to me, that's just saying you're asking for it. Again, he understands this because a just man falls seven times. Not a matter of when, but, but not a matter of if, but when. We're going to make mistakes when we intentionally do the things that we want to do. Remember Jesus, when, when, when it was time, his time to, to go and die, what did he say? Father, your will, not mine. He did, I believe he tripped up for a second because he was like, hey, Jesus, hey Father, can you, can you take the cup from me? He was like, oh, wait a minute. No, 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 wait. This is my purpose and my plan. This is my purpose. We need to remember our purpose. It may seem harm at time, hard at times, but we're supposed to do the hard things. Then the, the man went and told the Jewish leaders that it was Jesus who had healed them. Look, if you've been healed, tell everybody. Spent the last nine years of my life all over TV, all over the world, in Honduras, even with MS-13 gangs shooting outside, sharing, sharing our story all over the world. Because, yeah, I was a cheater, I was a beater, I was, not, I was running a ministry and not even a leader. And you know what? Somebody needs to hear that. But God healed me. Changed my life forever. So let me ask you this question. How much longer are you going to lay by the well? How long are you going to wait for the pool to stir? Would you like to get well today? Would you? Can I just see a show of hands if you want to get well today? You want Jesus to touch you? You want him to heal you today? I just by show of hands. Well, thank you. Put them down. For the rest of you, what is it you want? What do you want? People to take care of you for the rest of your life or actually walk out your purpose and help others? And then the next question I have for you is, what are you willing to do to get it? Because it's going to take you to rise up and get off your mat and do something. It's going gonna, it's gonna to cause you and take you to uh, not see it, not see it, but just walk, rise up and walk by faith. That's what it's going to take. I believe 100% with my whole entire heart, my mind, and every part of my being that we have the presence of God in this room right now 
He was ushered in with holy, holy, holy. So with God being here, I believe he wants to do something special. I think he wants to do the supernatural here today. And for those of you that raised your hand to be healed, I want you to come up here right now because God is going to heal you in this moment. Just line up for me. Ushers, if you would please just help me out here. Will, can I get some, can I, can I have one of the team back there just put on some, there you go, you got me. Are you believing? Can't see it yet, can you? That's good, because this is where faith rises up. Where's my ushers? Come on, where's my ushers? Father, in Jesus' name, I just thank you. Thank you that you're healing right now, touching this beautiful young girl right now.
Hey, everyone. Thank you so much for joining us here today at Freedom Fellowship International. We're so glad that you joined in to hear this dynamic message about how we can rise up. You know, it's time to lay aside every victim mentality that's ever been brought up in part of our life and to lay it down and get up and walk. It's time to get up and move into the plan and the future that God has for us. Today's message was deep and it was true. And if you're ready for your healing, you can have it today. God wants you to be healed. God loves you. He cares for you. He has a plan for your life. So today, rise up, walk into your healing, and let freedom be a part of helping you be all that God has called you to be. We'll see you again next week.